We begin today in the Gemara on the bottom of Dav Tezvav Amit Beis, where it says, Mokam HaYesham. It's eight lines from the bottom of the page. This is going back to what it said in the Mishnah regarding the, the earth that was used to place into the water for the Saita. So the Mishnah said that there was a place on the right, when you walked into the Chatzar of the Mishkan or the Besamikdash, there was a place on the right that was used to take earth from there and put it into the water. So here the Gemara brings a Braise, the source in the Pasuk for this, and then a Machlaikis about this. Taner Abanon, so we learned in the Braise, the Pasuk says, Umena Afar Asheyiya. But a full Pasuk says that the Kayan takes the water, and then Umena Afar Asheyiya Bekarka HaMishkan Yika HaKayan Venosan Alamayim. So the main thing that the Gemara is going to focus on is these words, Asher Yiyeh. It doesn't just say, Yom Afar, Bekar Ka Mishkan. Why does it add Asher Yiyeh? So from this we learn out as follows. Now, Yochel, I would think what that means is, Yisakein Mi Bachotz. You prepare it from outside of the Mishkan, V'yachnes, and you bring it inside, and you bring it inside the Mishkan, and you just, uh, you don't have to, even have to put it into the ground. You just, the point is, you have to place it inside the water, inside the Azara. But you, you bring, you prepare, you bring the offer from outside. Ashiyya bekar mishkan means it's mashma that you're not taking it from the kar mishkan. Ashiyya, that now it's here. Now it's found here. That's what I would think. Talmud Laima, but the Pasuk does say bekar mishkan. So it's mashma that the, the earth is coming from the ground in the mishkan itself. On the other hand, e bekarka mishkan. If we would only say the word, word bekarka mishkan without the words asher so yachal I would think yachpoi bekardumis that in the karka mishkan itself. So if there's no soft earth that you can take from there, so what should you do? You have to take a shovel and you have to dig and you have to soften the earth to take from there for, for the water. Talmud Laimar, so therefore the Pasik does say the term Asher Yiyye. So Asher Yiyye is mashma that it's just coming here now. It's going to be here now, but it wasn't there from before. It's not the hard earth that was there a whole time that you have to now dig and soften it up. So how do we, what's the meaning of these two words? On one hand, Bikar as mashma that it's from the ground here, and Asher Yiyye as mashma that it's being brought in from the outside. Okay, so what does this mean? Yesh Sham Hava. If you have over there soft earth in the Mishkan, so you should bring, you should use that earth that's there available in the Mishkan. Ein Sham, but if you don't have soft earth, so then ten Sham. You don't have to just not take a shovel and start digging and the, the, the earth which is hard. Just bring earth from outside, put it into the ground of the Mishkan for a moment, and then take it. So uh, ten Sham, you just put it there, and then you can take So Ashiyya means it can be there for a moment, and then immediately you can take it and put it into the water. Atanya Yedoch, in a different place that we learned, that there's a machlaikis how to interpret this pasuk here. for So what do we learn from this that it says Asher Yie Malamed? This teaches me Shahay Misakim Mi Bachutz Umachnes Bekarka Mishkan. This teaches me that you you prepare the the earth from outside and you bring it into the Karka Mishkan. Okay, so over here it says that you prepare it from the outside and you bring it inside and you put it into the water and it, which means you do not have to put it into the ground like it said in the previous price you don't have to bring from outside and then place it into the ground and then and then put it into the water no you bring it in from the outside isi ben yehuda imer isi ben yehuda says and i one second let me just go back a second i think i didn't read this right and the way we read it is malamit shay misakim mi bachutz umachnes that's what Ashiyya means. You prepare it outside and you bring it in and you put it right into the water. Now, the question though is, Bikarka Mishkan. So, what do those words, Bikarka Mishkan, teach me? So, Yisibe Yudaimer, that the, those extra words are coming to say, Lahavi Karka Shiloi Noi Vigivin the Beis Elamin. That this applies not only to the Mishkan, but Bikarka means the Karka of the other places that are similar to the Mishkan itself, whether in Shiloi, Noiv, Givain, and then Beis Elamim in the Beis Amikdash as well, which is not the Mishkan itself, but it's Bikarka includes even the Beis Elamim. Rashi actually says that you're not Gaitis, Shiloi, Noiv, and Givain, 
because they were a Mishkan just like the Shile that is. Shile is a Mishkan just like the Mishkan of the Midbar. There's no reason why it should be any different. And Naiv and Giva, and Rashi says, did not really have a halacha of a Mishkan. It was basically like a Bama. When you have a Bama that you could bring certain Karbanas on it, but you cannot do the whole procedure with the site there anyways. So it doesn't fall in here, Bechlal. Naiv and Giva. That's, that's Rashi's opinion here. So really, the only thing that the Gemara is being marbe here is the Beis HaMikdash, Beis HaLamim. Okay, so this is Isi ben Yehuda's opinion. So Isi ben Yehuda really argues with the previous Braisa. You bring the earth from outside the Mishkan, you put it straight into the water. There's no necessity to put it into the ground itself. I, it says in the Pasuk, Bekarka, that's another Ribu. It's coming to say that it includes the Beis HaMikdash. Isi ben Menachem, Isi ben Menachem says, and this, the shit of Isi ben Menachem is like the previous Braisa, ain't it Sarech? The word Bekarka does not have to come and tell me that the Salach applies even to the Beis HaMikdash. Why not? Because it's obvious that the Beis HaMikdash is the same like the Mishkan. Because Umar, <coughs> Tome Kalo, when it comes to a lighter Tome, Sarashi says the lighter Tome refers to a person that is Guf is Tome, and you're not allowed to walk into the Mishkan, you're not allowed to walk into the Beis HaMikdash. Loi Chalek HaKosov, the Torah does not, not make any distinction. So there's a Chiv Kodes, if you walk into the Mishkan or the Beis HaMikdash, there's no Chiv of Misas Bezdin, but it, it, so the title doesn't make any distinction. It's the same Isra of not walking to the Mishkan and the Beis HaMikdash. The Tumas Eishes Ish Chamura, when it comes to an Eishes Ish, and she went and had a relation with someone else, so this is much more of a stringent matter. For sure, like Kol Shikain, definitely the halachas that apply to her to use the waters of the site and to take it from the Karka Mishkan, there's no reason to think that there should be a distinction between the Mishkan and the Beis HaMikdash. Him came at time with Loima, the Karka HaMishkan. So why does the Torah say the extra words of Bekarka Mishkan? So the answer is, like we already said in the previous Brayse, Yisim Menachem says the same point in a different word. In different words, Shulayavi Mitech Kupasei. Don't bring the, the the earth from outside the Mishkan in a basket and bring it inside the Mishkan and there from the basket put it straight into the water. You have to take it from the basket that you bring from outside and put it first into the ground and then yeah, it'll be there for a moment and then afterwards you can put it into the water. Now the Shaila was asked, Ainsham offer. So if there's no earth over there available, you can't, there's no earth, not outside, not, you have no earth. So Mao, she eat an Eife. How about using ashes instead to put into the water? What's the basis of this Shaila? So the Gemara says, according to Beishamai, there's no Shaila about this. The Amri Beishamai says, Loi Matsinu Eife, Shakari offer. We never find such a thing that ashes should be referred to as offer as dust or earth. So that if the Titus says you have to put earth into the water, there's no reason to think that ashes should be included in that. So Rashi brings the source of where Bishamai speaks about this is regarding the mitzvah of Kisi Adam, covering the blood by a shechite. And there as well, the Pasuk says that you should cover it with offer. The Kisa Ba offer. And over there regarding that, Bishamai says that the Titus says offer and it does not mean ashes. It has to be taka earth. So if Beishami says that there by Kisi Adam, so it's the same thing over here by the Saita. There's no reason to think that ashes would be included. According to who is the Shaila, Aliba de Beiselo. The Omri over there by Kisi Adam, Beiselo say, Matsino Eifer Shakari Ofer. We do find that Eifer, that ashes, is called in the Torah Ofer. And this is found regarding a Paraduma. There the Pasuk says, And the Afar is written with an ayin, which is Afar, earth. Even though it's talking really about the ashes of the Paraduma, but the Torah uses the term Afar. So we find that the Torah refers to ashes with the term Afar. So Basil says that by Kisi Adam, ashes could be used, so maybe here as well. My, what's going to be the Allah? Do I say, Ah, forgive the Ikri Afar. Yes, it's true we find that sometimes ashes, or one time in the Torah, ashes is called Afar. So maybe that should be good over here as well. But hocha bikarka mishkan ksiv. But here the Torah uses the term karka. So maybe karka says that has to be mamish earth from the ground. So over here it won't work. Or perhaps I could say, like we've said before already, hi bikarka mishkan, the term bikarka mishkan, the Torah says, like the Isi ben Yehuda, either it's coming to teach me like the drasha of Isi ben Yehuda to say that this applies not only in the mishkan, but even in the base of Mikdash, or look at Isi ben Menachem hu, dasi. Or it's coming to teach me what Isi ben Menachem said, that when you bring it in from outside, you put it, in, uh, put it into the ground for a moment before you put it into the water. And you can do that with the ashes as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to be from earth of the karka. So that's the Shiloh. Could you use ashes for the water of the Saita? 
Shloisha Mekaimis, there are three places in Taita that we find Halacha or Keves Mikra. That the Halacha Lamaisha Misinai will go in the footsteps of, or really will uproot, a Halacha that the Taita says, that it says in the Pasik. What are the three cases? Hataira Amra Ba'afar. The Taita says, and this is, this is regarding the, um, this first offer the Pasik is speaking about over here, is regarding Kisi Adam. Right, this has to be with earth. For halacha, behold over. But the halacha is that it doesn't have to be dafke, dust, or earth that you cover the, the blood. It can be with other, with other things that, uh, as well. Rashi says as long as it's something that uh, can grow from it. So it could be other materials as well that, any, that, that, that something can grow from it could also cover. So that's the halacha of Meshem Yisina. Now, Hatayr Amra, Bitar. The Taita says that Bitar only with a razor. Right, so this is regarding a nazir, that a nazir is not allowed to cut us here with a razor. But the halacha, the halacha l'may shemisina teaches me, the chaldava, that he's not allowed to remove ears, not just with a razor, but even with the scissors, or any, even just with his hand plucking here, he's also chayiv. Okay, now she has a long discussion over here, that you may say that this is not necessarily uprooting what the taita says, this is just adding. The taita says a razor, and we're just adding not only a razor, something else as well, even with a scissor and so on. But Ashi says, no, this is considered to be uprooting because you're going to give this person malchus, and you, so this is considered to be uprooting. Okay. Then, the third case is a taita amra sefer. The taita regarding a get says, because of la sefer crisis, you write a get, and the taita uses the term sefer, which would mean a proper document. But Allah says that you can write the get on, on any on any surface, on any material. Okay, so those are the three cases where Allah uproots the Pshara the Pasik. Now the Imi said if it would be true that when it comes to the offer that the Taita says, the earth that you have to place into the water, that you could use ashes as well. So Lakshab Nami Hai. So this is a fourth thing that should be mentioned here. That the Allah allows to uproot what, it, what the Pasuk says, to use ashes, not only earth. Answers the Gemara, there's no raya from here. Tane v'shayr. The Tane here is saying these three examples, but he, he leaves out, he, le he doesn't bring all cases where halacha uproots what it says in the Pasuk. So it could still be that you could use ashes, but he, he, he left this one out. Frek the Gemara, oh my shayr, the high shayr. What else did he leave out together with this? The rule always is, no, the Tana would not leave out just one case. If he's leaving out at least two, we can say that he didn't give you the full list. What else is he leaving out that I can say that you, that you could still use ashes, but he left this out? And so the Gemara Shai Mitzayda. There's another case that he left out that we find by Mitzayda, the Halacha of a Mitzayda removing the hairs from his body. And there, the Halacha of Moshe Mitzayda is also different than what we learn from the Pasik, and the Tana doesn't mention it. What is this? The Tanya would learn it it's on the seventh day. So this is the Allah by Mitzayr. He actually has to cut his, he has to remove his hairs twice. That's the beginning. When he comes to being tired himself, he removes his hairs. And then a week later, again, he removes all his hairs. That's the first thing the Pasuk says. So the Gemara right away interjects and says, so when it says all his hairs, klal. That's a klal. It includes everything. And then the Pasuk spells out, the hairs of his head, this kone, his beard, this gab beseinov, and the ear, the ear, the, the eyelashes, or the eyebrows. Prat. So here the Teire already says more uh, specifically which kinds of hairs on his body should he remove. And then the Teire writes says, again, kol sa'ara yigaleach. All his hairs you should remove. Right? So chazav a kolal. So again a klal. So this is a klal, a prat, a klal. What's the rule when you have when the Torah writes a klal and then it specifies and then again a klal? So the klal is showing more inclusive, but the prat is telling you no, more specific. How do we learn this from this? So here the Gemara says, so the rule is, That means that yes, the Torah is saying a klal that remove all the hairs, but only all those hairs that are similar to the nature of the hairs that are described in the prat that the Torah specified. What is that? So just like those hairs that the Taita specifies, it's areas of hairs where there's a lot of hairs gathered together, and nira, and it's hairs which are exposed. So therefore this includes all hairs that are, that you see the hairs gathered together and it's exposed. So my Rabbi, what is this come to add? What do we learn out from this Klal of Prat the Klal? 
It adds, it tells me that this includes Rabbi Seir Araklaim. This includes the hairs of the feet, or this means the hairs and the Makama Erva, that is, it's, it's, it's gathered and it's, it's exposed. My meat. But what do we understand? What does this exclude? Meat, the base Hashachi. This excludes the hairs that are under, under the arms, which are not always exposed. Unless a person lifts up his arm, it's not exposed, so therefore it does not, it does not include this. Or the kule kufe, or in other areas in the body where you don't have hairs that are gathered together that are noticeable. So that's the pusik. If you take the klal of prata klal from the pusik, we understand that it doesn't actually mean that he has to cut all the hairs of his body. But now, what's the actual halacha? Megaleach kedalas. He has to shave all the hairs of his body kedalas, that his body is like a dalas, like a gourd, which, which has no hairs at all. Everything. All hairs have to be removed. There's no limitation. How do we know that now? We learned in the Mishnah, in the Mishnah, he comes to remove the hair from the Mitzayre, so the, 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 the shave, he has to shave all the hairs and his entire body. There's no limitations. Okay, so over there, this is talking about the cutting of the hairs of the Mitzayre in the beginning, beginning of the week, the first time. But then a Ketani Seif, it says in the end of that Mishnah, that on the seventh day as well, he shaves the hairs of his body. That when he cuts his hair the second time, he shave it, it's the same like the first time. So what do we see over here? That you have the Pasik and you have the Halacha of the Mishnah that tells us that the, the, the Halacha is different than what it says in the Pasik. So this is the second case where a Halacha uproots what it says in the Pasik. So that we could say that before when the Braises said three cases, it missed, it, it didn't count all cases, and it misses the case of the offer Saita that you could put ashes as well, and it misses this case of the Mitzayda that you have to cut all the hairs of his body, even though the Pasik says only the certain areas which are Konus and Venida. Rav Nachem Yitzchak, Rav Nachem Yitzchak says, no, this case of Mitzayda is not considered to be a case that was left out. It, it's no reason to include it here, why not? Because Kika Choshev Halacha Oikeves Mikra. It was only counting cases where the halach l'mayish misinai is a keves, which means here that it uproots. It uproots what it says clearly in a pasuk. It up, something that's mamish in the lashon of the pasuk is clear, and the halach l'mayish misinai uproots it. Ha a keves midrabanon. Over here, though, it uproots something which is only midrabanon. He. What does it mean? It's only midrabanon. So the pshat in this is. According to most Mepharshim, that a klal uprat a klal is not clear in the Lashon of the Pasuk. It's a drasha that Chachamim darshined from the klal uprat a klal that it doesn't include all the hairs. And then the Allah Lamashim Yisene uproots that. So because it doesn't uproot a clear word in the Pasuk, so therefore it's not, there's no reason to include this in the list in the first place. Rav Papa, Amar Rav Papa says a different reason why. There's no reason to include this case of Mitzayda. Kika Chashev, Allah Oikeves ve Oikeres. It only counts cases where the halacha of Meshemisina comes and uproots the halacha that the Pasuk says. But ha, oi keves, o meisafasi. Over here, it's not uprooting, it's adding. The Tere says you don't have to shave all the hairs on his body. And the halacha of Meshemisina says, no, shave everything. So it's not uprooting, it's just adding more hairs that you have to, uh, that you have to shave. So therefore, this is not a case that uproots what the Pasuk says. And Avashi says, this whole thing doesn't begin in the first place. We, we, what did the Gemara do here? It brought a Braise that brought a Klal Prat to Klal that said that you don't have to cut all the hairs of the Mitzayda. And then it brought a Mishnah. And the Mishnah says that no, the Mitzayda, even the second time at the end of the week when he shaves his hair, does have to shave all the hair of, it, of his body. So basically, Ravashi is going to say the Mishnah and the Braise are arguing. It's not the same opinion, Bechlal. So Ravashi Yamaha Masnita Mani Rabbi Shmoli. The Braise that says that you don't remove all the hairs, that's Rabbi Shmol. The Dorish Klali Uprati. So he quoted the Pasik and he darshaned it with the Klal and the Prat. So when the Torah says the Klal calls Sa'arai, it's limited to what's described in the Prat, the nature of those hairs that are described in the Prat, so it's not everything. But now we have the Mishnah, the Mishnah that says, Kiddolas, that you do have to remove and shave all the hairs of his body, that his body is t- without any hairs like a gourd. Mani, who is that going according to? Rabbi Kivi. That followed, that's a different opinion, that's Rabbi Kiva. The daughter is Ribuye Umiyuti. Rabbi Kiva, when he darshans such a kind of a pasik where it says first a klal and then a detail and then a klal, he darshans it with a different approach. Ribuy and Miyat, as the Gemara is going to explain now. The Tanya, as we learned in the Braise, regarding this pasik, so first it says kol sa'arei riba. 
It includes it and adds everything. Then it says, that it's only the hairs of the head or the beard or the eyebrows. Meat, that's excluding. Only this, not anything else. Then it says again, the Torah is being marba again. So here now, the, the approach of ribuy and meat is different than klalaprat. Ribuy and meat, we're going to be marba much more. So ribu and meat, on one hand, the Torah is being marba. On the other hand, the Torah is being memayit, it's excluding. Riba, okay, riba miyot, and then riba again. So how do we understand this? Riba hakoyl. So when the Torah is marbe, we're marbe everything. Not only limited to the nature of what the prat is. We're really marbe everything. So my riba mi riba the kule gufe. He has to remove all the hairs on the entire body. And that's what this Mishnah said. Kid the last. To be mamish like a gourd. Omai miyot. But we see that the Torah was memayit. It wrote these details to be memayit something. So we don't use the miyot as a prat that defines the klal, but rather the miyot is very specific. One specific miyot. Miyot seyer shebetoyach achaitem. All that we're going to exclude is the hairs that are inside the nose. That's what we exclude. That's it. But otherwise, you have to remove all the hairs of the body. That's the approach of ribu miyot. The miyot is not coming to define the ribui. The ribui is ma'abe everything. The miyot is a separate thing. And that's, we ma'ayit very, very little. We're only ma'ayit the hairs that are in the nose. So we get to the point is, that there's two, two, two opinions. There's the Braise of Klala Prata Klal, and then there's the Mishnah of Ribu Yimit, which is Rabbi Kiva. So therefore, there's no Halacha Lamashim Messina that's uprooting what it says in the Pasik. Okay, so the kids here, the point is, we're, we're back now. The Gemara now comes back to the original Shaila. My Havi Allah. What, what's, what's the story, though, with the original Abaya that we were discussing? regarding the, the earth that has to be put into the water, this, could you put ashes as well? So we brought, we tried to prove it from this b'raisa, and uh, the Gemara went through here the discussion. I mean, l'chayr, according to the maskan of the Gemara, it should come out. I mean, Taisus here asks the question, that it, according to the Gemara just concluded that mitzayre is not a case that was left out. So if so, this case of uh, the Afra Saita should be the only case that's left out, and therefore we should be able to prove from there that you cannot put ashes into the water. Okay, Taisus asks this question, but the Gemara comes back here to the original Shiloh. What's the story? Could you place ashes instead of earth into the water or not? So the Gemara says, Tashama, the Omer Rav Hunu Bar Ashi Omer Rav. Rav said, Ainsham Afar, if you don't have earth, so maybe Rakvuvis Yerek, you bring from from vegetables and, or leaves, vegetables that are decomposed or, that, that you can use similar to earth. Or mekadish, and you sanctify it in the water. So the Gemara thinks that if so, I could say the same thing with ashes. It doesn't have to be earth, it could be ashes as well. But the Gemara says, no, it's not the same thing. But lohi, you can't compare ashes to this rakvuvi sovietic of this, this, this uh, decomposed uh, vegetables. Why? That could be compared to earth. But afer loyavoy offer. But ashes in no way is it compared to earth, and therefore you cannot use ashes. So that's the Gemara's conclusion. Going back to the Mishnah, it said, Kidei she you have to put enough earth that you should see it floating in the water. Tanarabon on Son of we learned that there's a similar Allah that applies in a few cases. There are three cases where it has to be seen, has to be recognized. Offer Saita, like we said here regarding the earth that's placed into the water by the Saita, then the Eifa Pada, the ashes of the Pada, by the Pada Duma, the ashes of the Pada Duma that you put into the water has to also be ashes that you can see it, and also the Raik Yuvama, the Yuvama that spits at the brother of her husband that doesn't want to marry her after her husband passed away without children. So the Titus says this Chalitza, and Chalitza consists of her spitting, and the, the Bezdin has to see that spittle, it has to be clear, it has to be enough that they can see it. Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel says there's a fourth case. Av dam Also, the blood of the bird that's shechted by the mitzayda. When you mitzayda the mitzayda, the blood has to be shechted into the water. It has to be enough blood that you could see the redness of the blood in the water. My time with Rabbi Shmuel. What's the source of Rabbi Shmuel that he learns this out regarding a mitzayda as well? The chesiv, because the pasuk says, the taval oisam b'dam that you're gonna you're gonna tavel in the blood of the tzipper. That's the Lashon of the Pasuk, Bidama Tzipar. Okay, so this is referring to the Eza, the Tailas, that you, you tavel into it and you sprinkle it. But it says, you, we, where, where you tavel it into? In the Dam of the Tzipar. 
Okay, so the Bryson explains, Vitanya bidam, the Pasik says that you table into the blood of this bird, that you shechted here, yochel bidam. I would think that means just in the plain blood, v'loi b'mayim, but not in the water. Tamad leimar b'mayim. Or Rashi actually takes out the base of b'mayim, tamad leimar mayim. It says mayim, it says during the Pasik, bidam at sipra shchuta ala mayim achayim. So it says ala mayim, it has to be in the water. Now, imayim, if the Torah would only say water, yochel b'mayim, v'loi b'dam. So then I would say that, you have to table this Ezaif just in the water and not in the blood. Tamad leim abedam. But on the other hand, the Pasuk says that you're tabling it in the blood. So, okay, so what does this mean? Maybe Mayim, you have to have water. Shadam tzipar nikabahem. But then the blood that's in that water has to be enough blood that it's recognizable there. Now, the Kama, how much is this? Revius. A revius of blood in the water. So, this is where Yishmael learns out from that there has to be enough blood that it's noticeable. The Rabbanon, the Rabbanon say you can't learn out anything from here because Ahu Lugufe. The Pasuk, when it says that you toivel in the blood and you toivel in the Mayim, it's coming to tell me the halach itself, the Hachi Kam Rachman. And this is what the Torah is saying At Bul Bidam Ube Mayim, that you have to toivel the Ezoiv in the blood and in the water. But you, you, there's, not, there's nothing extra here to say that the blood has to be noticeable in the water. It has to be both blood and water, even if it's not noticeable. But Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel says, Imkain Lichter Rachmane Vitoval Bohem. The Torah could have said, it doesn't have to say separately, Bidam, and then Al Hamayim. should just say, Taibul in them. It already says before that, the, you could say together, the blood and the water, it said already before that there's water here. So why, why does it have to say separately the water and the blood? Bidam u Bamayim Lomali. Why does the Torah spell out both Dam and it spells out Al Hamayim as well? Lenikar, to tell me that the blood has to be recognizable in the water. The Rabbanon, the Rabbanon say, no, there's a reason why the Torah has to say both Dam and Mayim. Because Yikas of Rachman of Etovel Behem, if the Torah would just say that you should Tevel the Ezoiv into them, which means the water and the blood, then I would maybe say, that the water is, is in one vessel and the blood is in another vessel and you have to Tevel the Ezoiv first in one and then in the other. It doesn't have to be mixed together. So the Torah says, It says, So from that you understand that you have to mix the water and the blood in one vessel. But Rabbi Shmuel, but Rabbi Shmuel says for this, that the fact that you're mixing the blood in the water, that we understand already from another Pasuk, because it says, What does it say in that Pasuk? The continuation there is, El kli cheres al mayim achayim. So you understand that you're shechting it on the on the vessel where the water is. But Rabbana, but the Rabbana still argue. No, that pasuk is not clear enough. Because imahu, if it was just that pasuk, half a minute, then I would maybe say lishchete samoch lamana. They have to shech the bird. Al when it says there al mayim chayim, it just means near that vessel that has the water in it. But v'nin ketina leviridin, you hold the veins of the bird that you shechted, v'lekav ledam b'manachrinah, and you receive the blood in a different vessel, and not necessarily does the blood have to go into that vessel where the where the water is. Kamash malam, that's why you do need this pasuk here that teaches me the dam and the mayim that it has to be mixed together. So according to the rabbanon, there is no extra pasuk to say that the dam has to be recognizable in the water. Rabbi Yirmi asked Rabbi Zayda about the shear that Rabbi Shmuel said before. Rabbi Shmuel said, you have to have a revius of dam that it should be noticeable in the water. So Rabbi Yirmi asked, how about gedoyla or matches esamayim? If it's a bird, it's a large bird, and there's going to be so much blood that it's basically going to push away the water. It will be all blood, but no, no, you don't, it's not watery at all. Is that going to be okay? So even if it's a... So it's, it's matches esamayim, and so so is, is that going to be okay? Or ketano, if it's going to be a small bird, and then v'nitches mipnei amayim mahu, you're going to have a small bird, and then it's going to be doicha the water. So it's, what's going to be then? In other words, his question is, how can you give me this shear of revius? The shear of revius over here was not the shear of revius regarding the blood. The, the shear of the revius was regarding the water. You're telling me that if you can have a revius of water. So then the blood's going to be noticeable in that. Well, it depends on the size of the bird. If it's a very large bird, it might be filled, fill it to the extent that you won't even see any water anymore. It has to be some water there. Or by the other hand, it's going to be a very small bird. So in the revius, the blood is not going to be noticeable enough. 
Amalei said, Rab Zayda answered, Rab Yirmiye, Lava Minalach, why asking such a question? Didn't I once tell you, Rab Yirmiye asked similar kinds of questions regarding Shiyurim of the Rabbanon, and Rab Zayda says, I already told you, Litapik Nafsheikh Lebar Mehilchaseh, don't take yourself out of the Halachas, the Shiyurim that Chachamim established. Bitzipur Deroyer, Shir Rabbanon, Rabbanon, they measure their shear by a tzipur dreir, a certain kind of bird. I remember the translation exactly what this bird is. But a certain bird, that, that sort of a middle-sized bird. So even this bird, that even if it's a larger bird, it's still it's not going to completely overwhelm the water. And there's no bird of this type that's going to be small enough that it's not going to be noticeable at all in the water. So that's the shir that established regarding the tzipur dreir, that a revius is perfect. Tanar Abanan and Abrais will be learned. Hikdim offer lemayim. What's it by the site? You put first the earth into the vessel and then you put the water. Puzzle. So it's, it's not in the right order, so it's puzzle. First the water and then that comes the earth in it. But Abshemen Machsher. Abshemen, however, says no. That with the Yevad, it is fine, it is kosher, even if you put the earth first. My time with Abshemen. What's the source for Abshemen? The Chsev. The Pasik says, Velokhu Latome. This is by the Pada Duma. Right, but if you look at the psukim by, by the site uh, over there, simply the Pasuk clearly says that you put the water first and then the, the earth. So from where did Rav Shimon take that if you put the earth first, that the evidence it's okay. So he learned it out from Paraduma, because over there it says, that you take from the Ofar. So really it's ashes, but the Taita uses the term Ofar, which means earth from the Sreyfa Sachatas, from what was burned from the Chatas. Why did the Taita write over there the term Ofar? So we learned that I said, Rav Shimon, Vichy Ofaru. Is that earth? It's ashes. The Torah switched the word from Efer to Afar in order to learn out Exeter Shava. What is Exeter Shava? It says over here Afar by the Paraduma, and it says also Afar by the Saita. Just like by the site, the Pasuk says that you place the earth on top of the water. So the water is first in the vessel. So too by the Paraduma, first the water and then the ashes. Now, we learn out on the other hand also from the Paraduma to the site. Just like by the Paraduma, if the offer, really the ashes, comes before the water, it's still going to be kosher. Like you see over there by the Pasuk and by Paraduma. Afla halon, so too by the site, hiktim afla lamayim, kosher. With the eved, if you put the, the earth before the water, it's also going to be kosher. Now, vahosom minolon. How do we know by the paraduma that if you put the ashes before the water that it will be kosher? So the answer is because today, kroi ksivi. According to Rab Shema, we learn it out as follows. There's two psukim there. Ksiv olov. One pasuk it says over there is olov. Now, the full pasuk of olov is, you take me afar sarefes achatos, V'nosan olav ma'im chayim al keli. What does olav mean? Olav means alme efer b'reisha. Olav means you're placing the water on top of the ashes. So, the, so from this pasuk, it's mashma that the ashes is put in first. But ksev ma'im chayim al keli. But then there's another pasuk where it says that you put the water directly into the vessel first. Alma ma'im b'reisha. So the water comes first. So we have these two psukim here. Ha keitzat. So what do we do? So from, by the paraduma, I see that rotsa zen noisin, rotsa zen noisin. If you want, you could put the water first. If you want, you could pull out the ashes first. Yeah, but the, take, even, the truth is, even by the paraduma, the Gemara before said, we learn out from the site that there's a mitzvah to put the water first, but you do have an option. Either way, if you put the water first or the ashes first, it's good. It's okay. So therefore, from there, I learn out with the Shava that the same applies to the site as well, that you could put the earth first. Now the Rabbana that disagree with Reb Shimon, the Rabbanon El Keli Dafke. When the pasuk says that you put the water into the keli first, by even by the paraduma, that's it must be that way. The water comes first. Then when it says Allah, which we said before, means that the water goes on top of the ashes. So the ashes is first. That's not what it means. All it means is La Arvon that you have to mix it. You're going to put first the water, then the ashes on top of the water, but then you're going to mix the water that the water should go on top of the ashes. Okay, so therefore, even by paraduma, the water must be first, and the same thing by the site, the, the earth must be first. In fact, the Gemara, maybe Chacham should say the reverse. Maybe I would say that when it says olav, that's dafke, that first comes the ashes, or first comes the earth, and then the water goes on top of that. And then when the Pasuk says el keli, 
that it, it sounds like that the water comes to us, maybe that's coming to teach me something else. Shetehei chiyusan bekeli. Maybe it's coming to teach me chiyusan bekeli. Chiyusan bekeli means the flow of the live spring has to go into this keli, meaning that when you use the water for the paraduma or even maybe for the saita as well, you can't use the water that went from the spring into one vessel and then pour it from that vessel into a second vessel. It has to be the original vessel that got the water directly from the spring. Maybe that's all it's coming to teach me. But maybe the ashes do have to be first. So the Gemara says, no. The Chachamim say that doesn't make sense. Because, just like we find in another place, and the other place is by Saita, that it says, meaning, that the earth comes on top of the water and the water goes in first, Afka Machshulamaila. Over here as well, what's the, the Iker, what's Dafke is that the water comes in first. And then on top of that goes the ashes. And from the other Pasik that says that the water is on top of the ashes, all it means is La'arvan, that you sort of mix it. But first has to be the water and then has to be the ashes. First the water and then the offer. That's according to the Chachamim.